You're listening to Trollcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Trollcast. We have a really special episode this week. For the first time in 25 episodes, we actually have all four members of Troll on the podcast. This is Seth McClellan. My name's Sean Matthews. And joining us is our drummer. What's up, everybody? How you doing? (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know how he did that voice. And then Justin Patry, our guitar player. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Super psyched that we can finally get everybody on. Um, When you guys hear this, it will be EP release week, which we're really excited about. Um, This EP for us is a couple years in the making. And we thought it would be really cool to just all get together, talk a little bit about the music. Back probably about a month, month and a half ago, we took a little bit of a break when the pandemic kind of started going bananas again. So we haven't practiced in a little while. We actually haven't all been in the same room for like a month or so, maybe a little bit longer. So we kind of wanted to just like catch up talk about the music we're going to talk through some of the tracks probably all of them knowing us because we can talk forever and ever and ever um we're just going to get to catch up so you guys are going to hear us talking with each other because again like seth said we haven't been together in a a month month and a half and uh the plan is to just kind of let you guys know what we think how we feel we'll talk about the cover art um you know why we decided to make it, how we started out the process. And we've already talked about this once or twice before in the podcast, but now having the rest of the guys in here, it's a totally different perspective for you guys, our listeners to hear Gary and Justin's view of like the songs, why we chose them, um, how they feel about them and all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's start with the name of the EP, the name of the EP is Shark Pinata. Where (laughs) did we come up with that? And why, I think is a good question. So I think I got to probably take this one because this Mm. was my (laughs) crazy, weird idea. I had this idea about our music. I was like, you know, we're like not a super serious band in that we have like, you know, songs written from the perspective of a shark. So the idea of like Shark Pinata, it was almost like, scary fun those two words or sentiments kind of spoke to me as i was like yeah you know that kind of describes us because we're we're fun but we also have that little bit of a like a scary element to our music some of it gary um (laughs) (laughs) and uh the other piece of it it was is i felt like all five of the songs Mm -hmm. sound a little different totally and I thought pinata was almost kind of like, like when you hit a pinata, like stuff flies out of it. When I think of pinatas, I think of, you never know what's actually in there. Like, you know, it's supposed to be candy, but I've been to adult parties that had pinatas and there was booze in it and stuff like that. But you don't know what you're going to get. Like you, you could hit the pinata and all of a sudden you're like, all right, Tootsie Rolls. You, you hit it and you get Tootsie (laughs) Rolls. That's, that's not sounding very good. (laughs) um yeah so you know that was the kind of thing is just almost like the randomness of it like there's i feel like there's a like something for everybody you know you kind of get like the variety pack of of songs when you you take a swing and stuff falls out Uh, the songs we have on them are, are on it excuse me are definitely a wide range of songs um the first single is already out. Everyone's already gotten a chance to hear No Escape. And uh, a lot of people have given us some really good um, feedback and, and just love towards No Escape. Nice. I mean, Kevin Beeling of Drivetrain gave us some really good feedback and, and compliments. Um, I've seen a couple other people that I'm, I'm not entirely sure where they're from, but 
um, we've heard a lot of good stuff. Like, you know, there's a very Alice in Chains feel to the song. There's a very, you know, deep sound garden kind of texture to it. And, and that's really exciting to see and hear. And, and knowing people are kind of anxious and excited about it makes me more excited about the idea of it. Looking at um, the comment, I, I think, Seth, you, you said, you know, it, this, this was the, uh, the song that we would play for us to take a breather and the audience would go, you know, get a beer or something. You know, when you're playing live, you never really want to have that song where people leave to go get a beer but uh it it happens you have to hydrate yourself at some point so <laughs> to to turn around and hear all of the positive feedback it it just you know gives me reassurance that th even though when we're playing this live and we see people walk away they still love this song. They still like it, no matter what, whatever they're doing. So it, it, it was, it was good to hear the positive feedback. Yeah, I agree, and I, I think, you know, it's just a change in energy from what we normally have, as far as like, it's got this like mysterious kind of yeah. aspect to it, where it kind of draws you in. The and, I like uh, a lot of people were were yeah. were getting the Alice in Chains. Like I said, the Alice in Chains or the Soundgarden vibe off the song. And for me, I know, like, when I came into the band to try out, the two songs you guys had me try out with, one of them was an Alice in Chains song, and the other one was an Audio Slave song, which we all know Chris Cornell came from Soundgarden and then went to Audio Slave. So that makes me feel really good that some of our influences as a group kind of shined through in, in a way that we didn't expect like we just wrote the song to write a song that we liked you know we loved the yeah. guitar line the bass line the drums the vocals like we, it all came together and we loved it and then all of a sudden all these people are like oh a total alice in chains vibe this sounds like something soundgarden would write like stuff like that was like oh yeah yeah, yeah. well we're kind of influenced by them so that kind of makes sense but wow like i didn't expect that i expected people to be like yeah, cool song, bro. Like, stop poking us every 10 minutes. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but, you know, whenever we create our songs, I, I always lead with, you know, my emotion and my, my heart. So after laying, you know, creating this song, I would later listen to it and, and, and say to myself, wow, this has, uh, you know, when we kick it up, it definitely sounds like Alice in Chains, right? So that was not my intent, but that was my natural feeling. So to hear that in the response, it's it it is a very good compliment, in my opinion, no matter what. Hearing that people got those, you know, those feelings of the song was really cool because those are some of our influences and kind of something that we all bonded together with to originally write that song with Tom. And uh, it, it, I think it came through and, and Justin put his flavor on it and it was uh, it came out very well. I, I have no complaints about it. I think it's it's a great song and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the response we've gotten so far from it. So, yeah, me too. And I wanted to make sure to give Tom props because, you know, the original riff for this song um, you know, he had brought to practice one day and he said, Hey, check this out. And it was one of those things where, you know, we just, it started in one yeah. point and we just kind of took it and run with it, ran with it. But this song wouldn't exist without Tom. And uh, I actually, after it came out, he messaged me on Instagram and he was like, I love what you guys did with this song. I love the changes you guys made, the, the tones, the everything he was like, that's really excited great. that it came out the way it did and he was just kind of sharing his you know love for us so i was like pretty excited about that because i was a little like he was the one person i was like i hope that you know it was his baby Tom likes it because yeah, this yeah. was this was and that's, and that's understandable baby, you know? but that's yeah. really cool so. and, and again much love to tom because uh, i mean four out of the five songs on the cd are part of his brainchilds like yours and his Seth um, coming together and writing. And, and he, he put so much work in and wrote these great songs. And then, like I said, Justin adding his flavor onto it, his style, his sauce stank. 
Stank. Adding that Stank. on there, Stank. it changed the, dynam- <laughs> the dynamic of the songs. And uh, I think it's really cool that Tom reached out and, and gave some love to us. Um, we still love that guy. I mean, how could you not? What's up, my friends? This is Vinny from Diana Drive, and you are listening to Trollcast. Everything is gone in your own town. So let's right. go with uh, uh, a crowd favorite that has been blossoming over the years, and we've had multiple requests to have recorded Ghost Pepper Cantina because we mentioned it. On and on, welcome to the Ghost Pepper Cantina. This is where the spooks all go to get their party on. All these monsters living undead, they come here to have a drink. Now sit back, relax, please enjoy the show. So this one. Sean, you and I have talked a lot about this one yeah. in several episodes. I'm kind of interested to hear from Gary and Justin a little bit more on this one because, like, I feel like people have heard our yeah, we talk a lot about, about it because we have yeah. fun with it. So, so Justin, you know, before you were in Troll, you would came out to some practices. I think maybe even one or two before we even started playing, yeah. and then we played a couple shows together, and then eventually. You ended up in the band, so like, what was your impression of our like specifically with Ghost Pepper? Like, when you heard it, like, did you think it was like weird or wacky or <laughs> I don't know? That's a lot of pressure. It's all on you, Justin. <laughs> when I used like... to go to your practices and just I just would go to listen because a I had nothing to do. Like, I mean, I was wicked. Uh, I only practiced one day a week with my other bands so i like had all this free time i wasn't recording anybody so i was like i think i'll go and piss these guys off you you were pushing <laughs> your pedals right yeah yeah <laughs> yes he was, pe- I was gonna say, he was peddling his pedals <laughs> i was gonna say and he'd always show up with like wacky pedals to give to tom yeah, and like let him borrow his like work <laughs> yeah here's your homework try out this crazy pedal and i would inevitably try them too on bass and see what they sounded <laughs> yeah, like. yeah that was pretty fun <laughs> <laughs> but no I, I don't know i listened to it and i didn't think by any means it was weird or sucked or anything like that it's just different i mean i listen to a lot of weird shit too i i don't listen to metal music anymore i listen to like all kinds of weird shit like ambient stuff so it's like if it's music i like it's music i like Justin, I, I do have to say that, you know, um, when when you were at practice, I always uh, liked hearing your feedback, right? I, I always, you know, admire that or, or look for that in, in other people. I, I feel like, you know, we, we're we all friends. We all, you know, in, in this, in this uh, industry, if you will, um, you know, you, you have – if you just kind of maintain, you know, friends, you can learn from one another and um, it, just keep that positive atmosphere and take everything for what it's worth. And I always liked when you were there and your comments, I always took them, uh, you know, positively and I thought they were great. Well, that makes me feel very warm and fuzzy, Gary. Did, did, did your eyes water? <laughs> did your eyes water? I'm trying not to cry. Damn. Right now. I was trying to make a Hallmark commercial here. I'm, I'm looking, at that, looking at that bottle of tequila and thinking of you. Don't start talking about that because you, you have it hiding in the corner and you won't fucking open it. Can I say that? Yes. <laughs> we fucking swear all the time, Gary. It's a fucking shit show 90% of the right. time. All right. I, I didn't know what to expect. I was really nervous. No, you're good. And it's really weird no, because I have headphones on and a microphone. I can hear you guys. <laughs> I can't hear myself, but you can hear me, and I can't see anything. So I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm really confused he's in a, right he, now. He's in a dark room. For some reason, he didn't turn any lights on. <laughs> What's going on? Somebody tell me. Oh, jeez. I have to touch my leg. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. So, so kind of going back to the, the Ghost Pepper Cantina, um, the evolution of the song, I think, um, for me, has been a fun one because we started at, with a very like easy pattern, and then 
we changed it up a bit, but then for the recording process, we, we had a lot more fun. We mm. added in a beautiful intro that I think really adds to the song. Yeah. And I mean, that's all you, Justin, you know, you, 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 oh, yeah. you know, busted out the acoustic guitar. Right. And- that song has always reminded me of like, I don't know how weird this is, but like, I don't know, being like in old Mexico or something, like yeah. some dude's got yeah. a big ass Mexican guitar and he's just like <laughs> sitting against the side of a Pueblo or something, you know, playing that. That's how, when I first heard it, that's what I always thought. So mm-hmm. that's why I was like, you gotta get out the acoustic guitar for this fucking thing. Well, and that makes sense because that's kind of what we went for with the feel of it. It's it's a very salsa infused song and right. Uh, right. I, I love the, the intro to it and Seth, you and Justin kind of worked on this beautiful, spooky, crazy overlay for the song. So, yeah, um, for the intro over the acoustic guitar, I loved that sound, but it seemed like it needed a little bit more like ambiance happening in the background. Yeah. So I wanted to find specifically like a desert wind sound which is different than like the main forest yeah. wind or like mountains or an ocean well, wind. You, there's a specific sound to like a yeah. desert kind I was of say, you can dry. feel like the temperature wind. of that wind like when i've listened to the song you can feel that it's a warm dry i can see a tumbleweed yeah. just rolling across this yeah. desert road yeah, and i also wanted to find a, a wind that when it gets to a certain intensity that there's a little bit of a howl and so that howl actually creeps in and i listened to i'm going to say a hundred different wind samples until i found like the right one that i i wanted for that and then in the in the bridge it gets crazy because um we really wanted to be able to like bring the whole bar scene element into it like you know the whole song is about this bar in the underworld the the lyrics basically came up because like i'll be honest the first time we started writing this song i had no fucking idea what i was gonna write for lyrics for this song like nothing couldn't i couldn't at uh you know at first i had i so i wrote this song and just recorded it on my phone as a phone note and i called it I called it Latin Cata. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was just something that I like sent to the guys and I was like, Hey, check out this weird yeah. kind of Latin thing. And everyone was like, what are we going to do with this? Right. Like, <laughs> it just, it seemed like a very odd direction, yeah. but I was like, I, I hear, I hear something here. There's gotta right. be a way to like make this into a part. Yeah. Well, and that's, and, and when I first yeah. heard, like when you guys started writing it, like, and we've spoken about this before. Like I usually go chorus first. I want to know what I'm, you know, where I'm going to go. So I kind of write the songs backwards in a sense where I get the choruses done and then build off of that. And this one, I didn't even get a chorus. Like I couldn't figure out what the hell I was doing. And then I want to say it was because we were talking about uh, the ghost pepper tequila that I used to have. Oh, that was and, good. Yeah, and it, it just came about like this carnival barker basically announcing like, welcome to this bar in the underworld where we drink crazy friggin', you know, ethereal, spectral friggin' liquors and stuff like that. And, you know, the bartender's a werewolf, and if you piss him off, he's going to bite you. And, and then it just became almost like a friggin' avalanche of ideas of okay we're going to do a carnival barker for the verses and then what are we going to talk about in the choruses and well we're already talking about you know when i started writing the lyrics like it's it's from the perspective of this guy is trying to sell this bar to people like come on in like you know this is where all the spooks go to have a good time you know sit down enjoy the show and then the show what what is the show so you kind of describe monsters they're dancing they're they're grooving yeah. they're moving yeah. and all this stuff and it, they, it just turned into that <laughs> and there you have it a party song yes. for the underworld 
Exactly. And hopefully on many Halloween playlists <clears throat> coming 2021. Oh, good, good one. Good one. So, right yeah. after Monster Mash, you'll hear your Ghost mm. Pepper Cantina. Perfect. You got to have Thriller, Monster Mash. You got to have friggin' Oingo Boingo's Dead Man <laughs> Party. And then you got to have yeah. Trawl. I love that song. Ghost Pepper Cantina. Like, bang. That's your Perfect. party song for Halloween, baby. We are seasonal. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, and so you know, in that bridge, we wanted to kind of bring that to life. So I, I, I found all these different samples of you know, like werewolf noises and breaking glass and like, uh, you know, cans and bottles opening and you know, just like, kind of made this whole background scene happen, ambient like crowd um, yeah. laughter. And you you like literally and built the Ghost Pepper Cantina audibly through yeah. Sounders. There's, there's probably like, there's probably forty or fifty samples in there in about a like about a twenty second. But it also, sounds amazing. What, and, but also, what we did in the studio, it was so much fun. This was probably <laughs> the funnest song to record. Yeah. Especially when I broke uh, yeah. Justin's condenser, <laughs> doing yeah. a scream. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Oh, he was just trying to make you feel bad. <laughs> well, We're no, I felt good moment. about it. I was like, "Yeah, I got power." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I still like those outtakes. We got to use them somewhere. Ah, fuck your cock, motherfucker! Let's fucking party. As long as this thing fucking works, I can't tell. Yeah, is it? Is it? <laughs> We're working on a, a, a nice uh, ringtone packet for the fans, maybe. <laughs> oh, right. A downloadable ringtone. That is brilliant. Oh, God. What's up, guys? This is Will with Twin Grizzly, and you're getting nuts with Trailcast. Let's talk about Running Home. That was oh, the man. first song we wrote together as a band. And I feel like we've mentioned it before. Like we needed to put this song on the album because it was the first song we all wrote together. You know, the original lineup, Tom, Seth, myself, and Gary. And kind of, again, evolved the song a little bit and, and had some fun. And, and I've been Justin, how did you feel about coming into this song knowing it was like the first, you know, thing that the band had produced as a band? And how did you take that and and kind of, you know, flip it on its side and make it your own? Well, it's it's whack because this song, uh, it was your first song, but in Division North, our first song, The Fool, that we ever wrote, um, it's very, very similar. And it's funny because it's the same tuning and everything, too. So it was really familiar, like the pattern. Wow. I, I, I call the pattern like the filter pattern because it's kind of like playing uh, Hey Man, Nice Shot. Mm. It's not really, but it, it reminds me of like that type of... You know? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that, Just that kind part, of the hammer me, on. that was like wicked easy. Feel, and then yeah. uh, I, I don't know if I changed a whole lot other than that, except for during the verses, I kept repeating that but i was just doing it like a kind of like a scratchy like a you know right i like the telephone yeah. ring that was a nice touch yeah. oh yeah 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 that was right. yeah that was just kind of a random idea that yeah, it's Sean really fitting we found this like old telephone sound that we yeah well i i that. always you know this song for me hearing that guitar it just winds me right up. If I'm in, if I'm driving, this song makes me drive faster, right? And when we play it live, I'm just ready to go. So to to hear Sean in in your lyrics, it kind of put it into a, a a different perspective. And that phone call was just perfect. I I love yeah. that whole idea. It was awesome. 
I just felt like because we were doing this on our own that we needed to kind of try to spice some things up and try to produce things in a fashion that maybe we, you know, going to a, a bigger studio, we might not have the time to do. So kind of doing it on our own time and having our own uh, processes in motion, I felt like this was a good one to start with some weird stuff, you know, and uh, I think that's what started off with all yeah. like Ghost Pepper having all the samples and we talked about building the bar scene and, and then that coming through. And then this was like, okay, this song literally starts off with, I got your phone call last night, you know, let's put a phone call in the beginning of the song to really start it off and get people, you know, kind of in that headspace. They're like, Oh, th there's a phone call. Okay. And this one, literally every show that Troll has played live, I would say just about all of them. This has been our opening track. We, we do the intro and then we, that we bust into running home and it's just been kind of a tradition so far. I'm sure that we'll, we'll mix it up, um, you know, eventually, but, um, it just felt like this one needed to be recorded because it's like, it's literally what we lead off. with. Yeah. Well, and I time. think we did that um, because it was, again, it was the first song we wrote and we just started in the practices. That was the first song we'd play. So it kind of became, you know, running home vertigo. And then we started building on to the set list. And then it was like, well, where do we want to put this new song that we just wrote? Okay. Let's put it behind vertigo or, you know, well, where do we want? And we just kind of kept vertigo and running home one and two or two and one respectively. And it just yeah. worked because we basically practiced that a thousand times running home and then mm -hmm. it fades. And then Gary gives us that and then vertigo kicks in and it just worked out very well. Standing there going, what yeah. Are you doing? Now Justin goes, <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? Being the first song right now, or well, up until we stopped being able to play shows, I felt like that song starting the set off just worked because it started out with basically Tom coming up in volume and the, the song, like the tone of that. Oh, yeah. like that building up. And then it literally just and it just kicks right off. And then it kind of settles down a little bit. So the dust is starting to settle and then it kicks back up again. It doesn't even give the you know dust time to really calm down. And I feel like that song just amped up people more oh totally it may it makes you move no <laughs> doubt you you cannot listen to that song and not move tap right. your feet move around it like i said if if i'm driving i drive fast on that song because it just yeah. amps you up seth and i have mentioned this before but like <laughs> funk music in general what is, music is, Funk music, oh, you know. So, okay, sorry, I heard wrong. Okay, <laughs> okay, Gary, <laughs> cheese and rice. No, uh, funk music is 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 kind of inherently sexual. And when I, you know, joined the band and we started writing stuff, and we were talking about funk metal and you know Chili Peppers and all these bands that we listen to and trying to you know put some influences on, this song definitely gave me a very intimate sexual vibe and to be honest it it's definitely one that i've had multiple people say to me like please record that um my my, my significant other and i really enjoy that song and we'd like to enjoy it in private and it's like <laughs> oh okay uh, I, yeah, i've heard I it from heard a couple yet. people <laughs> and and i feel like That's... i think we're going to do them justice here and uh, i think they should be excited for you know the release of the CD. Hey, this is Kevin from Drive Train, and you are in the deep end of the pool. Withdrawal So, <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> I'm all hot and bothered now, boys. <laughs> um, we've talked about running home. What other songs do we have? Oh, what about that Requiem? Yeah. So, oh, Requiem. so that's, that's, yeah. that's the first song that the new lineup wrote together. Oh, that's so Justin, tasty. this is all your fault. So Justin, you start this one off. Talk about Requiem. Where did it come from? Why is it so damn good? Just came up so with it and it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Even 
before the first time um, we jammed with Justin, it was still like, um, it was probably March, like right at the beginning of the whole quarantine thing. Justin and I were sending a lot of like stuff back and forth mm. through Facebook Messenger, just like riffs and random stuff. And we hadn't even got the chance to actually like get together in a room and jam yet. He sent me the idea for Requiem, um, just basically like a, a guitar track recorded to a click. And I immediately li- liked it because I could hear like a cool, like funky bass counterpoint that would work well with it. Um, and then I actually think I recorded something at home and I like paired it up to it as well as I can. And I like sent it back to him and I was like, Hey, what do you think? And it kind of started there. But then once we, once we got together in a room and we all started working on it, it kind of changed a little bit, but it, it got yeah. even, even better. We kind of, uh, mm. you know, evolved it a little bit. Yeah. So I say one of my favorite parts of the whole song is the, uh, bridge breakdown it's it's the the section where essentially guitar is doing you know part a drums and bass are on part b and the vocals are on part c like we're all doing three different things sounds cool. at the exact same time and it comes together so well that it just every time i hear that section it, it, it i get goosebumps all over my body because it's just so cool that we came up with this thing that has literally three different things happening at the same time. they go together so well that you don't realize that the guitar is doing, you know, this style and this, you know, part. Yeah. There we go. There's the word. (laughs) And then, you know, drums and bass are doing this whole other like counter call kind of scenario where it's not really doing anything with the guitar. And then when I come in with the vocals, I'm doing something completely different from the both of them. And it just comes together so well. And it, it gets me so excited every time I hear that part. Yeah, that took us a minute to figure out because it's always easy to to follow whatever, you know, rhythmically, it's always easy to follow whatever the guitar is doing. But it's harder to say, okay, that's happening. However, I want to try to complement that but not play that. I want to play something different and actually create a counter to it. And it took us, it always right. takes a little while to figure that out. And then once you find it, you're like, holy crap. It sounded like Meshuggah or something where it was not, not necessarily in intensity or heaviness, but really that whole left brain, right brain, what the hell is oh, happening yeah. scenario where it's like, it's still in four, four, but like you're hearing, you know, two different things happening well, it, that are. Like yeah. I was going to say, it's, almost, it's like the guitar is you know, playing four, four. The bass is technically playing four, four, but it sounds like it's three, four. Same with the drums. Like just these notes are hitting and it's almost like it's falling down the stairs kind of just not necessarily just slowly walking down the stairs. It's like they're almost falling over each other down the stairs, but they sound like they're meant to do that. Yeah. They're, you know? they're still all, all together. Yeah. Yes. I really, really enjoy the song. And, um, you know, I have a tendency to try to just, you know, overplay sometimes and then you know seth you and 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 justin this this was your song and i i always i really loved it from the beginning and you gave me a couple examples and then you know seth and i we just kind of had this off beat it but it went with a guitar and it was just brilliant it came together and it's one of my all-time favorites really um i love the bridge um, the section yeah. where it quiets down and we get, and we get Sean yeah. kind of solo singular. Um, and then we get this cool part that actually, um, you know, Justin was like throwing out ideas. He's like, Gary, try this with, uh, that kind of cool, like little yes. drummer boy yeah. snare. Kind of yes. Thing we have in. more than one breakdown, more than one, then, like, you know, where, where you, 
you kind of stop and, and reset. This song is is so interesting. It's it's up and down, up and down. You know, we we we've been doing this for a while, so we hear you know, trim the fat, get to the chorus, have the breakdown, do this, do that. As far as format for a song. I feel this song has all of that and then some. It is never boring. It is just so interesting to listen to. You you are captured from the moment it starts to the moment it ends, and then you want to hear it again. You want more. It's awesome. For me, too, I think this one connects a little differently because it has a message that – you know, Sean's delivering that's like, I, I kind of see as maybe like Troll 2.0 where like, you know, we have some songs that are like, like Ghost Pepper, like Heart Charidon, like Vertigo that are kind of theme based that have a story and a world yeah. all their own. And then you have these songs that have like an actual message that people could connect with and apply to their own lives. Like, they're more rooted in reality or more rooted in, um, you know, sort of like a, a feeling or a sentiment or something that we wish can happen. And uh, this one, to me, I was just like, I think this one has potential to have people actually like take something from it. And, and you know, um, I, I hope I hope that that kind of comes through. Very good really point, like Seth. You that. know, those other songs are very fun. And I will say these recordings, the vocals are crystal clear. Justin, you are amazing. And, and I'm able to hear all of, of, oh, Gary, of Sean's yeah. lyrics, right? <laughs> so going back and hearing this song, the, it is, there's this positivity and honestly, guys, it has stuck with me. And, and I, Friggin' I, I love it. I, I just don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and I'll be honest. That that song came together because, and I've said this before, the vocals came to me because of the picture Seth usually posts on his Facebook page of him with his, you know, his bass hanging off him, and he's got his fist in the air, and it's just yeah. like, like he's trying to be positive and he's trying to make a difference without being a dickhead or a douchebag about it. And, and still being cool. And, and yeah, but at the same time, Seth is literally one of the nicest guys <laughs> I've ever met in my life. And he is genuinely a positive person in my life. And, and, and somebody that I didn't realize I needed so much in my life as now having him in my life, I realized Seth is a positive person and, and him and I getting together, to do the podcast, being in a band together. It has generally or genuinely, excuse me, helped me feel better about certain things and, and help me get through some of the more tougher times with like, you know, maybe depression or, you know, not being a hundred percent and Seth being in my life has changed that for me. And, and I'm very grateful to have him in my life and the Requiem, him starting out with the talk about, you know, the name of the song and like what we wanted to do. And then, it just kind of ballooned from that to this is Requiem. It's a positive song. Um, most trial lyrics are positive, um, except for Carchardon. It tends to be about a shark wanting <laughs> to eat somebody. But that's, that's okay. Funny. But this one definitely because of Seth's influence on my my you know personal life, being a, a good friend of mine now and uh, a bandmate and a brother, it helped me write something that was more positive and more meaningful. And I, I personally feel it's one of the best sets of lyrics I've ever written. And it's probably one of the best songs I've ever been a part of writing just nice. because of what we came together to build. And then the way we changed it and what we laid down for recording, I just feel like it's, it's gotta be one of the best songs that I've ever been a part of. So I concur. Dude, man. And you know, thank you for saying that stuff. I'm speechless. I, you know, yeah, it, it makes me feel really good. Um, and uh, I, th I feel like, you know, this is what this band is about for me is just really it's friends getting together, having fun, jamming. There's no, you know, egos or reservations. And we or talk bullshit. about butts it's a lot. Like fun, <laughs> and we, you know, 
yes. If butts are it part happens. of the conversation, that's okay. You know, no judgments. It's all good. <laughs> <Hell's> um, good. <laughs> but, you know, I just, it's just, uh, it's a fun band. You know, none of us are, are doing this for a living. We're all having, uh, you know, Wait, we're what? just doing it because we love Am it. Am I not getting a check? <laughs> and, <laughs> Sorry, um, your, your check yeah, for eight gonna... cents will be in the mail <laughs> tomorrow, Gary. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean that means a lot to me. I think I think uh, you know this is this it's just been a blast so far. And I think the one thing that I I, I said it before um, in another podcast, but I really just hope the fun that we had making this music comes out in the recording because i think um that's really what we you know depend you know d- regardless of the song yes i think we totally. have like making this totally. and that's what we hope to get across yeah i know um and justin i, you know, I just want to make sure that he eh, he's fine gets enough props and credit for, <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> justin put up put up yeah, with no all shit of us. i know um tracking tracking this thing in in the chaos of like us changing our minds and wanting to try this and wanting to try that and no i, I don't know. like this. i gotta I say like my favorite parts um, is when justin's getting... like are you ready and you're like you're looking through the window at him and you're like yeah maybe am i ready and he's like i don't fucking know and you're like yeah i'm ready uh, <laughs> like it almost gives you a, a small <laughs> tinge of hesitation, and then when you fuck up, you get all these sounders that'll come out as a ringtone soon. <laughs> fuck, I came in late. <laughs> Shit, came in early. <laughs> I'm lost again. <laughs> Josh had like half the beer, and then he's like, oh, I can't drink this, and then poured it over the boat after he dumped mine out. Well, he took off, and my fucking can was on the, his little dashboard, and it was like. Went all through his shit. Like, all his lures smell like jalapeno beer right now. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, man. $15 a four-pack. Fuck you. That one. Shit. 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 And then the other piece is mixing. Because mixing is like a labor of love in and of itself. That takes so much work and effort and yeah. attention to detail, and this it's an art form. It's literally like it's literally an art form. So, and you, I thought you did an amazing job with it. So, I just <laughs> wanted to, you know, I've been doing a lot lately because <laughs> obviously with these two bands, and I've got my friends in the Gut Truckers are recording a CD right now, and uh, Chris Layton from Twin Grizzly, he gives me a lot of work. Him and Joey Nash yeah. have been doing a few things in here too, but uh, Chris gave me a. Uh, he gave me a, that Christmas song oh, that yeah. Tim Grizzly just put out like, that was around great. Christmas time. Oh, yeah. That was a fun song. So they self-recorded all of that all on their own, like everyone at their own house. And Chris is just like, hey, I'm just going to give you all the tracks. Just uh, just do a quick mix, you know, whatever. And I was like, mm, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to be quick. I'm going to do a good job, dude. So I get it here. And anyways, I'm reamping all their freaking guitars through amps and shit here. And I sent Chris a video of it. And he's just like, dude. How long is this taking? I'm like, uh, I'm at like four hours right now. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, I didn't think it was going to take that long. I'm, like, I'm going to make you sound it. good. I don't want you to sound <laughs> like suck. I feel like we're cut from the same cloth in that because like I can't, my, my literally my bones, I can't half-ass things. Mm. And if somebody gives me something like, hey, just send me a logo or send me a flyer, like just only spend a half an hour on it. I'm like, no, like. Because I don't want my name right. on anything that doesn't right. look less than my best. So, and I feel like you're the same way. It's like if you give it to yeah. me for me to work on, I'm going to make sure it's as best as I can possibly do it. Because it's know? not just but, them, it's you too. Because you're like the like unofficial member of the band doing half of that stuff. So it's like, I'm, right. no, I'm not going to just go, die, right. here you go. It's going to be and like, you don't okay. want anybody like, you don't want to be anybody else listening to it and being like, whoa, what's what, what's up with that mix? Yeah. You know, yeah, you're yeah. like, I'll tell you right now, I can half ass the shit out really of some stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, just, me too. I'm, I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to, you know, <laughs> Seth, I have to say, the that friggin' cover 
is awesome. That's the shark pinata artwork oh, yeah. is awesome. Where did you come up with that, dude? Where, where could, what can you share with us that it's just awesome? Yeah, so um, the cover art itself, I actually commissioned an artist to do. Um, however, the rest of the CD art, um, yeah. you know, the back cover, the inside, the disc itself, behind the disc, I did all of that artwork um, myself, all the graphic design. But the cover art itself, there's an artist from Indonesia um, named Adam Handal. And uh, he does this stuff. It's called, like, if you were to, like, look it up in the art world, it's called, mm -hmm. like, abstract expressionism. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the idea of, like, using frantic lines to create artwork or just, like, mm -hmm. you know, frantic shapes and colors. <clears throat> but he's, he's, a, he's really good at the style. And I reached out to him because I liked his work um, online. And I was like, can you draw me a shark? And I had this idea that it would be like the shark pinata thing, but I just knew that I actually didn't even tell him mm -hmm. anything about a pinata. I just knew that his style would kind of bring that um, vibe out. And um, I was originally going to go a lot more literal, like try to get like somebody to draw like an actual shark pinata hanging from something with like somebody hitting it with a stick. But, it just, it was hard to get that, to pull that off the way I really wanted to, but this ended up working really well and better than I thought. Um, it was, it's, it's almost one of those, like, it's, it's cool. Cause it's imperfect. It's like, it's a little messy and just like us. And like, when you look at it, you're like, Oh, it, it yeah, has I, a cool vibe to it. Yeah. I love the colors. Um, I love so that, all of the different, um, you know, pages of the artwork and, uh, I, you should be very proud. I, it's it's awesome. Yeah, the the artwork's fantastic, and I think I think a lot of people are going to want that on T-shirts. So we're, we're going to have to figure that out. This is Ian from Division North, and you're tuned in to Good Cop, Bad Cop on Trollcast. All right, so end of the tunnel. Um, so this was another one that, that I had actually, it was right after Ghost Pepper Cantina. I, I wrote this one and, on, and saved it on a note on my phone. It was kind of like I was going through a period of time where it was just kind of rapid fire. Like I had all these ideas going and I had saved a bunch of parts um, into a note in my phone and uh, – we had started working on this one, I think, right after Ghost Pepper Cantina. You'll find some patience lying deep where they hunt. No longer driven by these crazy dark stairs. Just find some grace to help pave the way. Cause if you don't, the dark is where you'll stay. Um, yeah, I I, it's, I remember this in the in this in the uh, the old practice space. It was it was a lot of fun. When you put this on the table, I was like, "Yes, this is great. This is what I'm looking for." Because it was upbeat, it was driving, it was boom. It's the fastest song we have. I think I can't remember what the BPM is, but it's, I think it's like one one seventy. This is not only like the fastest song. It's difficult to pull off on bass. I also sing the most I've ever sung in any song in this song because I actually have parts in the verses and in the chorus, um, which is different for me because I'm, you know, not used to singing. Like I might have like one little section or one little part in a song, right. but this one I'm pretty much singing the whole time. Which I'm is, working that ass, man. <laughs> which, is, which is different. <laughs> oh, Seth, don't don't edit that. That's pretty good. That that that's the spot on. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I I love this song because it's it's another one of those songs that I, uh, you know lyrically I wrote for you know a positive sake and uh, 
and and just the way the feel of this song goes, I feel it's got like probably one of our heaviest breakdowns or just, you know, hits. There's this one spot at the very end of the song, well, not the very end, but towards the end of the song that just live, I feel like it knocks people into their chairs. Like they're standing up. And then when this hits, they all sit down like, holy shit. And it, it just has such a great vibe to the song. And the build up to the whole thing is just magic it's it's fantastic and it's so much fun to play it's it was so much fun to record um i think w- this was the first one we were all together recording right or n- am i wrong no that uh, I, don't know. I think so because the first two we were a bit you know like a couple of us would come in to do some parts yeah. you'd come in to do vocals but this song all of us i think were in the room recording and uh it definitely i think it needed it because this song is like one of those that like requires like your full attention and to be like on your game i know that like it's also one that because it's so quick like on drums gary like i like i remember like listening back and i'm like yep that works no okay take that again like there was a lot of like you know, giving each other kind of notes back and forth. Like, okay, here's what we're going for there. Here's, you know, so like, I think that's one thing that throughout this whole process we've had to do is kind of, um, you know, because we didn't have a producer from outside of the band, somebody who was kind of a third party to tell us, you know, what was working, what wasn't working or, or that's a great take. That's not a good take. We had to police ourselves and we had to like rely on each other to be like, yes, that, that hit that worked and, or no, that didn't work, which I think we got comfortable saying to each other, like, this is, this is good or that's not good. Or oh whatever. yeah, definitely. Because, like, yeah. There's, there's no other way to like make sure something doesn't suck than to like have to be like, all right, that was cool, but that didn't quite work. You're almost you know? there. It's, like try yeah. it and you got to bet. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think that was the nice thing though, is like you, you kind of stepped up as the producer of this and you know, like we were all involved, but I felt like you definitely took a, uh, a lead role in the, um, like just the producer essentially. Cause you, you'd come in like Gary, you know, be banging on the drums and he'd do a part and we'd stop. And then, We'd listen back and then you'd go in and say, okay, you know, this first part was perfect. Don't, don't change anything about that. The second part though, you kind of, you could hear, you kind of got a little too comfortable and it didn't quite hit as well as it should have. And I think this, you know, song in particular, you definitely did that for pretty much everybody was, you know, we all kind of worked on it, but you definitely took a, a lead in that and, and saying like, okay, this didn't hit the way you, you wanted it to, or this hit way better than you originally did it. So keep that. And I kept thinking like, oh, fuck, Gary's going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> or like, Sean's going to hate me or whatever. But no. I feel like, you know, I, I just tried to approach it from a way it was like, hey, like, just throwing it out there. Like, I feel like you got a better one more of just like my belief in you. I know you got Mm -hmm. a better one. I know Mm -hmm. you can do better. You know, thank thank you so much, Seth. You know, I, that, that means a lot. And I appreciate that so much because I, I do feel the same way. We've both been in situations where we, you know, record (laughs) in a studio where there's uh, an engineer that's there kind of, playing that producer role right and um and and i uh, with sean i i 100 agree you kind of took that role on yourself and i i and i know it was a little more you know than than you're used to but i really appreciated it that classic saying of you know uh keep it simple or 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 you know it's it's just don't try so hard and it was great and uh those experiences with those songs were great and i really feel that we've really pulled out the best that we could with those songs on our own yeah and some and some of these drum parts in these songs all together certainly end of the tunnel because it's so fast and you have these like you have this one roll that shows up i think it's in the pre-verse it's like this really quick roll that's like a like a little shotgun blast and it's really cool that i didn't hear until after we 
had it recorded all recorded and i was like holy shit that's really cool and some of the other songs even like we've already talked about you know no escape i think is a drum song for days like some of these songs just really showcase drum like the drums and i and i was just like i really feel like this is a strong um showcase drum record um drum ep because i mean not you know obviously there's a lot more on it than that but like these songs really showcase you as a drummer well thank you i so much appreciate that uh, and um i i love these songs and i just keep listening to them over and over it's it it, it is really awesome to be a part of this project and creating these songs 100 i was excited because um some of these songs were a little bit more straightforward for me on bass. Yeah. I I certainly I certainly got to do some flash, which you know I love to play flashy parts, but I also feel like I was a little bit um, you know more I guess you know I I I tried to serve the song where the song needed to be served and not throw in extra things where they didn't right. need to go. Um, but I got to do a really cool kind of slap bass bridge mm, yeah. in end of the tunnel where there's this cool uh uh justin through this cool kind of compression on the bass and i got to do this like slap bass mm. bridge that i worked out um i snuck it in there i, I love doing snaky. stuff like that and whatever you know whenever i can sneak in some slap bass certainly it's like one of my favorite obviously mm. styles from um you know my my influences and kind of where I go with the bass is always to be funky. So if I can throw some of that stuff in there, where it makes sense and where it fits, right? It. To- <laughs> totally. That's that's right. where we came up with the t-shirt idea. When in doubt, slap it out. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that, dude. We need to make that shirt. <laughs> well, and totally. Speak, and Justin yeah. added a uh, not a synthesizer, right? Was it a synthesizer? Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's a module. module. It's okay. It, it, but it's add- okay, Justin. You can admit to it. It's okay. It's well, and add he <laughs> added to this song and Requiem this you know yeah. almost undercurrent tone that is occurring in spots that added a new texture and a new layer to the song that I think amplified that part exponentially compared to what it would have been just not doing that and having it just be us. Like it added a new layer to the song, so. Too, I think the hand instruments, like the what do you call it, auto slap or whatever. The the vibra slap. Is. Oh, the vib- vibra uh, slap. Vibra yeah. slap. I always yeah. say auto slap. Ugh. But anyways, yeah, that stuff and uh, the kabasa and all that stuff all added to it. Yeah. It's like another. Definitely. It's like another instrument. Yeah. Justin likes to add sneaky layers of things in into the mix, which I think is really cool because like. I love those sort of like, you know, almost like an Easter egg. You have to listen for it, but you're like, oh, yeah, well, shit, when you find it, though, you're like, oh, that's kind of nice. I like that. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Shell from the band Stillborn Condition, and you are listening to the Twelve Cast. Seth, you know, I, I, um, you know, I just want to say you spend a lot of time editing and, and putting all this together. And Sean, I know you're a part of it. I just think all of this is just super awesome. I'm, I kudos to you guys. I just want to shoot that out there because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always on the outskirts and not fully involved, but I just think it's awesome. The time and effort, all of you guys yeah, do for this. I just want no to recognize thing. that. No, we appreciate it. Yeah, it's man. it's very important, um, dude. Yeah. I think it's well, friggin' yeah. awesome. I think it's important for us to stay connected to our fans, and I think this podcast helps us do that because one hundred percent. Some of our fans may not know us personally, or you know, maybe they do know us personally, and they still listen to us because they like to hear our takes and our thoughts on other weird shit. Yeah, it was it was all born out of not being able to play live shows, and we're like, well, what can we do to like continue to like talk to people and to make it kind of keep the community going around like the main music scene and talking about local bands, talking about, you know, 
memories. I think that's important too, because it, it uh, reminds us of all the stuff that we have done and that everything does still matter. Yeah. It's, it's not like any, anything actually went away. Right. It's just, it's all on, on right. hiatus for now. Cause uh, and I, you know, we've, we've all put in a lot of work and, and effort, uh, you know, musically live shows, you know, everything, everything that a band takes to, to stay going. And, and all, all four of us have worked very hard at it. And I, um, you know, just thankful for all of that. And, um, yeah. So, you know, just to throw that yeah. out there too. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm with you too. I hopeful we'll get back to the old norm someday, but some, Me too. <laughs> but, Me but too. Any place left. Play. well, right. And, and yeah. sometimes it's hard to think if uh, sometimes it's hard to believe we will get back to that, but I'm trying to stay hopeful. I cannot wait to play a live show again. I'm sure you guys feel the same. Yeah. And, and Gary, you know, we've said this on the podcast before, but like you have one of the most pure loves of drumming we've ever seen. Like when you, you just get so excited yeah. when you show up to <laughs> practice and like, you just letting the, oh god letting the uh, aggression out in the I call it oh. dad rage. Uh, you gotta let gotta let the dad rage out um, <laughs> on the drums and, and not that you're like a mad father because you're a great father, but um, <laughs> just the fact that like you need an outlet to get out the week. I know that for all of us, you know, especially in the last like month, month and a half when we haven't been doing it again, like it's hard because we don't have that every week outlet but it will come back we will do it again I, um you know and it, it, yeah. it will kick ass but <laughs> yeah no i know seth oh man you you have no idea hearing those words just uh really really meant a lot because that's uh, you <laughs> you really kind of called me out there you know I, I i do that's it's it's my outlet and um I just, uh, I, I love it. It's, it's just, it, you know, uh, thank you. Thank you guys, you know, and, uh, we'll, we'll get there. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. I think one of my favorite parts about us doing this CD is the fact that doing the physical medium gave us the opportunity to do something really cool. And that was put all of the stuff that we've recorded since we started as a band together on one CD so that if you do happen to buy the physical copy, you're going to get all the tracks that we just recorded. So shark pinata, the EP, and then the two tracks for, um, what did we call them? The halo. We're we'll calling the, the, the halo, halo singles. singles. There we go. Um, singles. you're getting those added in to the, you know, CD. So instead of just getting five songs, you're actually getting seven songs when you get the physical medium of the uh, music, which I thought was really cool. Uh, if you go digitally, you know, go through iTunes or Apple music, you're only going to get the five songs. So physically you're getting more. So the two extra songs, are we going to have to go through like 67 seconds of dead air before those no two bonus songs no. play it's, that would be kind of cool it's the nope. shark pinata <laughs> ep and then the halo singles or halo studio sessions <laughs> it's it's just added on to the end of the cd it's gonna be instead of a five song ep you get a seven song cd to just kind of give you more to listen to of what we've done i feel like the way we did this was a thank you for people for buying the physical copy because again digitally it, you don't make as much money, not that we're in this to make money, but you don't make anything in return digitally. Yeah. I, I, not very much. Yeah. And I also thought it was important too, because I really wanted to honor the band up to this point in what we've done. And, you know, if we would have had our way originally, we might've recorded more songs before now because we we didn't want to make fans wait as long as right. they have for, you know, the EP. And, but at the same time, you know, we went through a lot of changes as a band, you know, we lost Tom, our guitar player, 
um, along the way. And then we, we got Justin, but when I was thinking about like thanking people in the credits, I wanted to make sure that we thanked, um, you know, Tom, I wanted to make sure we thanked everybody who supported and helped the band up to this point, or at least as many people as I can remember, because I'm sure there's going to be some people who <laughs> we might've left out and there's no slight to anybody. We appreciate all of you guys, um, certainly. And, you know, we, we on lists, it's, it's a setup because it's always inevitable that right. someone's going to get left out. But, um, you know, we wanted to put, you know, the band out there on a CD and just say like, this is everything we've done so far. Um, and make sure that we can kind of honor the memory of this time, um, you know, that we've kind of spent together and all of the changes and everything. Boom. Here it is on one CD. This is Troll. So I thought that that was something cool. And, and, uh, we really wanted to do something special. And I think this, this is going to come across, um, hopefully that way. And for you guys, and, um, we're excited about it. And the other thing too, is we love Bull Moose. Yes. yes, yes. Um, you know, we, we absolutely love Bull Moose. We've all been, we've all grew up pretty much buying records at Bull Moose Mm -hmm. and to release a CD there and actually have a place that will sell our physical music that is a network of stores that actually cares about local musicians and, and local bands um, to be able to sell our CD online. They'll ship them. You can get curbside pickup and actually just drive up to Bull Moose and they'll, they'll have your order. Yeah, whip it out the door. At you. You. Um, no. <laughs> curbside. Um, you can still go in the store. Um, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to, get our music out there and outlet. So thanks for, um, I guess, hu- not humoring us, but indulging us in still doing something that isn't necessarily, you know, the Spotify, the this or that. We're still yeah, going to do all of still that. still going to come. However, it's going to come, it's going to come a little bit later. We want it. We want there to be a little bit of a, a time where the CDs out there, and that's the way that you can purchase this. And then the, the Spotify and iTunes and all that is going to come. Gonna, yeah, it's going to take its time later. to come out because realistically, it, like I said earlier, with us, we're not in this to make money. But if we want to continue to keep doing this, a good way to help us and support us is to buy the physical copy of the CD, uh, you know, buy shirts and stickers if we have them for sale, because all that stuff turns right back around and goes back into the band and the band fund that we have pays for stuff like CD production. And, you know, you guys want to run a t-shirts, you know, every little bit helps us, you know, we're, we're not making any extra money off of this. It's not like Seth and I are, you know, multi thousand dares, I think is the term I was looking for. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> we're dollar. Man- yeah. We're dollar. Man- we're dollar man- man- Jeez, that's, from that it's home jesus uh, but no we don't make any you know we're not making any money that you know is changing our lives we're not you know the podcast is us having fun and any money that we do happen to make off this goes back into the band fund so that we can continue to produce stuff for you guys musically and you know i'll be i'll be honest three of the last four local bands that i have purchased cds for have been at Bull Moose. It's a community. And I would hate for someday the only way you can get music is on your phone. You know, like I feel like we would be missing out on such a a music community locally by not being able to walk into a brick and mortar store. So like anytime we get the opportunity to do something like that, like I'm there with bells on, like delivering CDs, like, you know, doing everything we can to make sure that like stuff's in stock and like, it just, it's, it's such a cool thing over the years. This is actually personally for me, the, the fifth or the sixth release over the last, I'm going to say 13 or 14 years that I've done with Bull Moose where I've, um, you know, worked on the album either, you know, musically or Mm -hmm. artwork or otherwise. And then, you know, consigned it with bull moose and then set it all up for consignment. So like, it's something that I've like come to um, 
like it's one of my right. favorite parts of I'll, it. I'll, so um, for me, like not doing it felt like, wrong to you. Yeah. You know, like if we didn't do it, yeah. it would just be wrong, this is, you this... know? So um, that's an explanation. If people are wondering like, why are they yeah. still making I'll say TVs, This is the, that's for wrong. me, this is the first time. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, for a few things for me, uh, I've never done a pre-order for an album. Um, I've never co-signed anything to Bull Moose to sell. And honestly, I've never had anything of mine in a store, you know, that I've done musically. Like it's usually all online sales through, you know, the websites or, you know, it's at shows, but this is exciting for me because these are all, this is all new territory for me. So I'm super excited for people that go out and, uh, you know, get their hands on a copy and be there, uh, you know, f this Friday to pick it up. And I'm working on to <laughs> the, the pre-orders should ship a couple nice. days early so that people actually nice. get them on release day, not, you know, right. I don't want to make people wait through the weekend when they pre-ordered it because the whole point of pre-ordering is right. getting that hey, shit on. Hey, can I day. get curbside pickup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can. They you don't. can. No, they will do curbside pickup. You can order <laughs> online and then you click curbside oh. pickup. Instead of shipping it, you just drive to the store and someone will come oh. out with your bag of goodies. Oh, damn. I thought I was right to you. I was trying to be funny, but you that's that's awesome that's awesome yeah, man. hey that's the benefit of yeah. shopping local and giving a shit about you know your local stores and stuff man it really is so. awesome that is great that is great so yeah, that, yeah ladies and gentlemen this friday march 5th it's the day it's shark pinata day it's trawl day at bull moose you guys gotta you know get your pre-orders in uh, you know, this is coming out a couple days ahead of schedule or ahead of the release, but get your pre-orders in. If you don't get a pre-order, you can get to a local bull moose. They should have a copy there. If not, I'm sure you can order it through them in store and have them get it to their store or, you know, sent to your house. So, it, it, you know, if you, if you want, get out, show us some love. So this is Matt Heath. I hope you enjoyed this episode uh, of the trawl cast. You can catch my boys Seth and Sean on a regular weekly basis when they can put these up and uh, don't forget once this whole plague is over and we're all back out playing shows and doing things and not taking things for granted just remember to, to uh, support local and just be excellent to each other all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning into this special in-depth look at the shark pinata ep by trawl coming out this friday we're super excited for you all to have a chance to get to listen to it we really really appreciate everyone being patient with us and and giving all the love and support that you guys do give to us on a you know a bi-weekly basis with the podcast all the love and, and support we get on the facebook the instagram the twitter everything we love you guys we thank you so much for all that stuff so Thank you for tuning into this super special edition of Trollcast. If you like what you hear, we are available on Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many, many other places. So hit that subscribe button. As soon as a new episode drops, they will be there, ready and waiting for you to hit play. We are also available on YouTube. All you got to do is go to youtube.com slash trawl Portland ME. That's the YouTube page. We post everything up there that we can. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button. So you get notified every time we, you know, post something on YouTube. If you are able to rate and review us five stars, give us a little write up and tell people what you liked about the show. It helps us move up on all the charts so that we get more listeners and we can spread the beautiful joy that is trawl with the rest of the world. So do that. We'd love you and appreciate you for doing all that. <laughs> If you'd like to send us a voice message, all you got to do is go to anchor.fm slash trollcast. Hit that button. Have some fun. We'll incorporate it into an episode. We love hearing from you guys. We want to get more people to send us some voice messages. So go there. Hit that button. Give us some love and say hi. If you have a question, comment, show suggestion, or want to send in a soundbite or just say hi to us, cast a line to us at trollband at gmail.com. For more information about Troll and all things Troll related, all you got to do is go to www.trollband.com. Again, thank you guys so much for listening to this super special edition of Trollcast. It's coming out again on a Wednesday. 
We really appreciate everyone taking the time and sticking with us. My name's Sean Matthews. This is Stephen Paul. We'll see you next time. <laughs>